pretty much lined up with the trailer and the water. So I'm coming in straight. And the boat is over there to the left. Here I go. Wheels of the trailer are now in the water. Now, see the bunks way in the back? Some people have a hard time going to a boat launch, getting the boat in, and taking it back out. There's kind of a protocol that you follow to do that, and then a lot of people have a hard time backing a boat up. So I have some tips, some things that I've learned over the years. Follow me. I think you're going to learn from that. So let's back up until the rear tires crest over into the garage so I don't go too far up and run into the trailer. The vehicle is in. The boat is here. I unlock the, uh, the pin on the top, set it here, take the, the cover off the ball. Open this up, crank this down, and then I crank it all the way down until it's on the ball. And then I close this, I give it a, a big Yank to make sure it's really on the ball. Put the pin back in. Lock it. Secure the key. Take the two safety chains and there's a place to hook them on each side of the hitch. Take my lights. I have a little rubber cover that keeps the lights covered over on the back of the vehicle. I plug them in. And then I visually look to make sure that the lights are on. I bring this most of the way up. Pull the pin, lock it over, move that out of the way. As I told you before, I loosen up this strap before when I get it back to the garage, but since I'm gonna trailer it, I'm gonna tighten it up a little, make sure this is locked so this can't come undone, and then I do the back. Now I have the strap hooked already on the D-ring on this side, it's over the top of the rods. As you can see, the strap goes over the rods, the back of these rods hook underneath some straps here, so I don't worry about that so much. I'm hooked on the other D-ring. I put this rag here just to protect my decals. Tighten this up manually to here. I crank it. You can see how tight it gets. And I give it a pull. I know the boat is on, secured to the trailer. Okay, everything in the boat is secured. I've got my safety straps on. This is tightened down so that uh, it won't be loose. I don't have the fish finder in here yet. And nothing is in here that can blow out. So I'm ready to roll. So let's go fishing. Now we are arriving at the boat launch. And most boat launches have an area where you stage to get your boat ready, which I'm gonna do that along these poles on the right. And then when I get back out, I park over there in the grass away from others so that I can get the boat ready to tow home. You need to do that if you don't and park yourself on the middle of the boat launch, you will really hear the ire of all the people that are trying to get in and out of the boat launch. So probably not a good idea. And that's cameraman John. Say hello, John. Hello, John. <laughs> I normally start the motor out here just so I'm not pulling multiple times to get it to run in the, in the water. So I turn on the fuel here, 
turn, open the vent here, put it on choke, put it on pretty close to start. Now, once you get this running, that propeller will run once you get over a certain speed. So just be careful you don't bump into it or especially if you got other people with you that aren't paying attention or kids. And I do this just to get it a little bit warmed up and ready to go. Then I turn it off. I got to turn the fuel off. Got to close the vent again. And this to launch the boat has to be in the horizontal position. Just push it up, turn it. I leave my handle kind of like that. Sometimes it'll swing. Now, here's my boat plug. <laughs> Very important to put this in. Otherwise, when you get in the water, the boat fills up with water. So I got that in, I'm ready to go. My, my rods are ready. I have un, I'm now undoing the strap on this side that holds my rods down. Now, I push this back because I get into the boat this way, right here. But this rod holder is kind of in the way. So I take this out, I put it back here so that when I get in the water, I can get in here and I'll have nothing in the way. Let's go launch the boat. As you can see, I have the back of the vehicle open so that you can see the trailer and kind of where it's going. Now, once it's the trailer is empty when the boat's in the water it's very difficult to see if you look i can't see a lot but so i'm going to tip this down quite a bit so i can see the bottom of the opening fairly easily so when i'm going down the boat launch you can see where the boat is and i'll leave it here for now but you see the stem that pvc pipe in the middle I'll turn you the other way let me show you what that looks like. That's always pointed the direction where the trailer is. See how when I turn, I can tell by looking that at that where the trailer is pointed. I'm trying to do this and uh, and back up at the same time. So I'm starting to back up and you can see where we're going. Now let me show you something. If I want to go that way with the trailer, I put my hand on the bottom of the wheel and I go to the left. If I want to go uh, to the right, if I go that way, then the trailer will go that way. Whatever way the bottom of the wheel is, is the way how the trailer will go. Again, I'm trying to drive and hold this GoPro at the same time. So I'm trying to go in fairly straight. Here we go. Trailer's in the water. And I back in all the way to the point where the boat itself is in the water, as you can see. And my back tires are partially in the water. All right. And I put the parking brake on. 
just to make sure. Normally this does not take that long to do, but I've turned off the motor just so that extra noise isn't bothering you. Now you can see where the tires are, they're in the water just a little bit, but I don't know if you can see into the water and the boat launch itself, it's really slimy. So I hang on to my handles and I go kind of slow because I have taken a dive <laughs> going into the water and I get around the back and at this point I unhook the front of the boat, take the strap off, hook it back on just so it's not dangling so much. I take the rope I get this out and I usually just drop it in the water and I found it doesn't tangle as much if it's wet. Into the water. And I get around the back and at this point I unhook the front of the boat, take the strap off, hook it back on just so it's not dangling so much. I take the rope, I get this out, and I usually just drop it in the water. And I found it doesn't tangle as much if it's wet. And then I would have already loaded everything into the boat that I wanted. Here's my fishing net, the rods are in the boat. I don't have some of the tackle with me, but I would have put that into the boat already. So now the boat is ready to come off of the trailer. So I grab a hold of the rope, I give it a shove. Once I get it here, I give it enough shove that it goes all the way off. Now I'm past the trailer and I pull it over to the side. Get it up to me. And I untie the boat. Just don't let it drift away. And I take my rope, I throw it in the tow vehicle. I make sure there's enough strap that when I close the lid, I can make a turn and it won't be in the way. I then, I just find it easier to get the water into the hull. And so I, I push my two pedals. And the port side always takes a little bit extra to fill. And then I drag the boat up. And I set it, I lift it, I set it on the concrete. So when I pull out, the waves aren't gonna make this wash off and flow back in the water. I lift it up, and I move it in. Again, shuffle my feet, because it's slippery here. And I get it so it's floating just a couple inches. Okay, I'm in less than my knees, and the boat is floating a little. But when I lean on this, when I lean on this, the boat will sink and get stuck on the bottom which means it won't move and it'll be stable. Now I always wear Crocs uh, when I do this with no socks so that I can get into the boat. Okay, I lean over onto this, shake my feet off and I'm in the boat. Now, then I put on my life jacket Pull my seat up a little bit, throw it in a reverse, and that's why I got the water out, or the air out, and I'm ready to go fishing.
Okay, we're going to take the boat back out of the water. And this side of the boat launch has sand on it. It's concrete all the way across, but there's more sand here, so I tend to try to beach it here on this side. So I'm not rubbing the bottom of the boat on the concrete so much. And I'm careful getting in, just trying to bring it in just a hair. All right, I'm in shallow enough. There you go, I felt the bottom. I'm not rubbing too much. When I lean forward, the boat sinks a little. I step out. When I grab a hold of the boat, same thing. I don't want it to drift away. So I'm bringing it up onto the concrete. I lift it, I set it, and we're good for now. Let me go get the trailer. Now, that's uh, the way how it is at this boat launch. You may be on a, uh, a grass boat launch like over here uh, where there's no boat launch at all. It may be a d gravel boat launch. There's all kinds of different launches that look different, that are shaped different. You have to take that into account. So whatever your uh, situation is, you got to adjust for that. Now this is probably the most critical time to be able to see the trailer because there's no boat on it. So I am going to adjust this from maybe up to be down a little so that I can look at the bottom of the opening and see the best that I can. And again, I'm backing and holding this at the same time, but same idea, put your hand on the bottom of the wheel and go slow. All right, I'm pretty much lined up with the trailer and the water. So I'm coming in straight and the boat is over there to the left. Here I go. Wheels of the trailer are now in the water. Now, see the bunks way in the back? Hopefully I can angle this over. I make it so that the bunks touch the water. I am not trying to jump the front of the boat onto the bunks to get out of the water. Again, I'm turning it off, but I don't normally. Okay, boat's not floating yet. Let me get it to float. Step in easy so I don't crash on the slippery ground. And I'm trying to get it in. And I'm almost all the way in, and I pull the rear end to get over towards the back of the trailer. And now I'm just drifting the whole thing over to the back of the vehicle. I get a hold of my rope, I lay it out in the water, make sure there's no knots. And this is the way I tie it. I go through once, twice, overhand knot twice, and then once that, and it stays secured but yet it's easy to untie. Okay, I push it out past the boat trailer. Once it gets past, I can steer it on. I get it most of the way up here, if not all of the way up here. And I take the rope, I loop it in around this fish finder, just because I leave it in the boat. I pull this to the side, I give it a yank, just watch your fingers, and then 
I get the strap. Get the strap around here. Connect it. Okay, I'm all the way on. Close this at this point. Just make sure my rope is all the way in so I don't run over it. We're on the trailer straight. Let's get it out of the water. Okay, the boat's out of the water. I need to put the motor in the down position. I never trailer the motor in this position. Took my lever. Put that over. Keep my seat. Snap it shut. I tend to turn it around so that it doesn't catch in the wind. I put my safety straps on with the hook in the up position. I'll get the other one in a minute. Here's my towel. Here's my ratchet strap. Toss that to the other side. Set it here. Straighten the strap, I take the hook, put it on the D-ring, over the top of the, the rods, I take this other fish holder, I put this back in its slot because that keeps the rod from getting out this way. Take my safety strap, put that back on. Back to this side, I straighten my strap, hook it on the D-ring, take my little rag. I use this to wipe down the boat, but I didn't really get it dirty, so I'm not bothering. I take out the slack, I crank it down a few times until it's pretty tight. I give it a pull, make sure it's connected here. this again make sure this is on all right nothing here is loose nothing can fly out all the rods are secure my live scope is secured my fish finder is secured here seat is ready to go my motors in the down position we're ready to trailer let's go home okay the boat is now back in the garage and first thing I do is Loosen this strap in the front, just so it's loose. Let it come around the back and loosen this strap, just so it's loose. Then I get my battery charger. I connect it to the main battery first. That's just the way how I do it. And then I have this pigtail you saw that connects to these two batteries. And I didn't even use them so I don't have to charge it. And then I plug this in to my power cord that comes up here. And I didn't even use that so I don't have to really worry about it. Now I get the trailer unhooked from here. Pull my pin, flop it down. I have a little thing that holds this in place once I get it down. Take my keys, unlock the pin, lift this up, pull off my trailer connection. I put my little rubber boot back over. I disconnect the two chains, 
connect them to each other and leave it there. This is still in the up position. I crank it up. As you can see, it's off the ball already. And just so that I don't lose my pin, I flip that over, I put it in here, I lock it, secure my key, take the ball cover, put it back on. I usually do, do this at the boat launch. I pull the plug so that as I'm driving down the road, any water that might have gotten into the boat somehow spilled in there, splashed in there will hopefully run down and run out that hole, but I always take that out. I put this through here. So this sits so that when I go again, I can clearly see I don't have the plug in. Well, there's a big truck going by, so I hope you can hear me, but I hope you learned something. This applies to a small uh, tr boat trailer, a large boat trailer, other kinds of trailers. They all work the same way. So thanks for following. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye now.